I'm um, going to brief you on the details as we know them regarding the officer-involved shooting that occurred on August 9th, 2023 in the 2400 block of Northwest Highway. This is the eighth officer-involved shooting involving a Dallas police officer in 2023 and the sixth time my officers have been, fi my officers have been fired upon. On August 9, 2023, at approximately 12.45 a.m., Dallas police officer Nathan Ch Nathan Nathaniel Chapman was working in a plainclothes capacity, on duty, conducting surveillance in the 2400 block of Northwest Highway. The preliminary investigation determined a gray sedan pulled up behind Officer Chapman's covert vehicle. Three suspects got out of the sedan and approached Officer Chapman's vehicle on the passenger and driver's side. At least two of the suspects had firearms and pointed them at Officer Chapman and demanded his vehicle. Officer Chapman complied and was allowed to exit the vehicle and began to place distance between himself and the suspects. As Officer Chapman backed away from his vehicle, he drew his duty weapon. Shots were fired by at least two of the suspects and by Officer Chapman, who was ultimately struck in the left leg. The suspects then sped away from the scene in the gray sedan and in Officer Chapman's covert vehicle. Officer Chapman called 911 and Dallas police officers responded, administered first aid and took him to a local hospital. He was treated at the hospital and released. The stolen covert vehicle was, lo not, was located not far from the scene. Dallas police immediately began work to identify and locate the suspects. Evidence recovered at the scene and further investigation identified three of the suspects. 19-year-old Rodriguez Lewis, 17-year-old Retravian Polk, and 18-year-old Xavier Cook. On the night of August 9th, the three men were located and arrested in Shreveport, Louisiana, and charged with aggravated robbery. Additional charges are pending or possible. Two pistols and a rifle were recovered in Louisiana and matched the caliber of the shell casings from the shooting. Detectives were able to determine Lewis was the driver of the suspect vehicle. Lewis and Cook left the scene in the suspect vehicle, while Polk left the location in the stolen covert vehicle. All three suspects are from Louisiana and have prior juvenile criminal histories. The investigation is ongoing and being investigated by the Special Investigations Unit. The Dallas County District Attorney's Office and Office of Community Police Oversight were notified and responded to the scene. Again, this is our eighth shooting involving a Dallas police officer this year, yet another incident where the suspect armed with a firearm shot at my officers. You will see from the video, we are lucky that Officer Chapman is alive today. He is alive because he tapped into his warrior spirit. At least two of those suspects fired nine times at our officer. He bravely stood in the face of these evil individuals. It's what our men and women do when they go to work each day, not knowing what the day or call will hold, to serve and to protect this city. And here's an officer doing his job, working to protect the people of our city from violent crime when he becomes a victim himself of a violent act. I'm grateful to Officer Chapman and to each of the brave men and women of this police department for the great work they do each day and the bravery and commitment to our profession and our city. Now you all know this has been a tough week for us and I cannot thank the members of our SI, SI, SIU unit enough for the remarkable investigative work on this case and the expediency in which this case has been resolved. We'll now play the surveillance video.
All right, with that, I'll open up the questions. Chief, was his surveillance uh, completely separate from these three individuals, or were these three individuals involved in what he was there looking for? No, uh, unrelated. Unrelated. He was there. He was one of our one of members of our one of our covert units, uh, and doing his doing his duty, um, conducting surveillance across the street. So they were completely unrelated. Completely caught him by surprise. So it could, could have been anyone parked in that car that these guys were just looking for someone to carjack. Yes. <clears throat> Absolutely. How did you get through that? Uh, What's that? The investigation. How did you get yourself? You know what? By great investigation, I, I'm not going to go into all the different. There was evidence that was found at the scene uh, that our detectives pieced together. Uh, they just do amazing work. Um, it was it was great investig investigation. One more. You said that the three of them were from Louisiana. Yes. So do you think this is something that usually happens? I mean, uh, criminals coming from other states still cars and then go. Oh, it, it happens regularly. It absolutely happens regularly. Uh, these individuals did not come into Dallas to just have a good time. Uh, they they came here on a mission, uh, and I'm sure as we look further in other things, I'm not going to be surprised if there were other crimes uh, committed by these three. I'm sorry? There were, there were, there were pistols and, and a rifle that was there. One of them was a 223. I, I, I really don't, I can't even tell you. Um, honestly, obviously, you know, when they live in Shreveport, I think that distance helps uh, when you're not from the area. Um, so obviously, if they're trying to get back, it's probably, uh, that the vehicle they were in uh, was stolen. Uh, and so what our investigation has revealed is that they probably didn't want to drive back and stolen in, in that car that was just, re that was, had been reported stolen. So jump into another, I, it doesn't make any sense to me, to be honest with you. Uh, but again, I think it's the fact that of the anonymity of not being known in Dallas and coming from somewhere else, uh, but it happens regularly. And, and the camera, that, the video that we just watched, is that a city camera, is that a private business camera? It is a private business camera. Uh, so for the officers that fired us which officer did that, that you know? I'm sorry? I, I, I don't believe so. I don't believe he had time. I mean, it, it happened very, very quickly. The covert vehicle, the covert police vehicle, is that a, uh, is covert police vehicle just a normal vehicle or is it a vehicle that is outfitted with radio, with other police tools? You know? Inside of it, it does, yes. So it's kind of an obvious demo. Can I check it? That it we, would have, we, we are surmising it was very obvious to them when they heard the radio traffic of an officer having been shot, uh, and that's probably one of the reasons they dumped it as quickly as they did. So they would have been listening to the radio, uh, the reaction to the response to the very crime that they committed as they were driving by? Yeah, it depends. It depends on what channel uh, the officer was on at the time, but I think they, heard, they may have heard some radio traffic, and that's why they dumped the car. I mean, obviously, if you look around, you're going to know that's probably not the vehicle to have taken, um, but in any event. It was a short distance away. It, it, was, it was pretty quickly. As a matter of fact, I think when, uh, as officers were responding to the scene, I think the car had already been dumped. It was very quickly. Uh, again, I can't get in the, to the heads of these, of these individuals, but uh, I, I mean, I would imagine. Well, he's doing well. Uh, he was uh, uh, released that night, treated and released that night. I met with him at the hospital. He was in great spirits. Uh, he, was, he was ready to get back to work. Uh, like every police officer here that puts on this uniform or, or goes out and, and does his job. So he was in good spirits. Uh, but obviously our wellness unit uh, will be very much involved uh, with him, as we spoke about yesterday. Uh, we're going to normalize the fact that uh, here's the thing. I mean, he may, he, he's feeling great. He's in great spirits. Uh, but uh, the three 
at least two armed suspects shot nine times at him at le relatively close distance. Right? It, it's by the grace of God and his warrior spirit that we didn't lose another officer that same day. Um, and so, you know, we're, we'll definitely, uh, we're definitely going to keep our, our, our eye on him uh, and have those conversations with him uh, and any support that he may need uh, for any officer uh, that would go through such a traumatic incident. And we break it down like it's routine. This is what police officers do. No, no human being should have to go through that. None. And so that's something that we recognize and we're going to work very, very hard to ensure uh, that our men and women know that that's not normal. We know it's not normal uh, and give every offer and uh, wrap our arms around them. He's been on the department since 1999. So he's a veteran officer, absolutely. Very well respected, very well, uh, does a great job. Mayor. What's that? Mayor. Well, I'm not going to go into his personal life. But. Um, you said he, there's potential charges in Louisiana. Is that, do they sort of believe that they continue to commit crimes, or is this more something that occurred prior to the carjacking? And are they it's part of what I discussed. There, there may be other, other things that, that they were involved in in Dallas while they were here. Um, and so that's why their pop, other charges could be possible. They could be tied into some other things. Are there any potential charges that would work like that in Louisiana? Um, that I don't know. Oh, okay. And then do, do, are they in the process of being brought back? Yeah, they are. And, and can you speak at all in, in general terms of the type of covert operation that Mr. Chapman was involved in? Um, no. Not to give it away, but our covert units are throughout the city, um, looking in and in going to areas that we know violent crime occurs. Uh, they're an invaluable tool for us, uh, particularly the area that he was surveilling that oftentimes are, vic are victims of robberies and things of that nature. Uh, he was doing his job, um, you know, and this is it. Doing his job, a veteran officer doing his job in the, at 12.45 a.m., I mean, uh, you know, you gotta, you really gotta give it to them uh, to to be able to have that type of mentality and to really, I mean, that's this is a veteran officer that really wants to help the city and reduce violent crime, um, and he saw it firsthand. There, normally depends on the intelligence that they're getting on a day by day basis is when they get the, where they're deployed. But again, they're invaluable for us, um, and we absolutely need them, uh, and uh, it's something that. Uh, that I'm grateful that we have those resources available. Uh, they've helped solve many crimes for us. Um, and although we were a victim on this one, it also solved this crime. Yeah, they were not gonna stop. Um, you know, he put his life on the line really to protect the residents of the city because had it not been his car, there was someone else whose car was going to get carjacked that night. That is 100% fact. Um, and so on one hand, we're fortunate that a resident of the city of Dallas was not hurt. We're fortunate we didn't lose an officer, but make no mistake about it, had it not been his car, there was another resident that was not a police officer of this city that would have been carjacked that night. None of the suspects were uh, injured. I'm sorry? None of the suspects were injured? Uh, no, we don't believe so. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can we do this? Yeah, we'll do this. Thank you, Chief. Thank you.